Speaking of interest, we've been hearing all day about how it may be a different approach to ads, getting the right ads, thinking about revenue and player retention. That's what this session is all about. It's about how you can talk about how you can progress rather, looking at incorporating in-app ads to increase overall retention and revenue. That's the big and. So both of them, two wins. And we have our speaker, who is Ben Kaplan, product manager at Mopub, also a sponsor of this session. And I'm excited to hear this because, of course, we've been talking about this all day. So understanding, quote, how to elevate your game, improve revenue and retention with the right ads approach is really something that resonates, but I would rather hear maybe a little bit of music potentially from Ben because I checked in this and Ben, you said it, you recorded and starred in a mock Justin Bieber video music, uh, video uh, music video rather for sorry. So don't know how that happened, but. <laughs> That's a that's a story for another day, another another that's day. Panel, Peggy. Another, I, can't, I can't cover that now. <laughs> no, no, no. I didn't want to go there. I didn't want to go there. I just always want to show the human side of everything. But I'll let you go because this is an important panel. We've been talking about it. Take it away, please, Ben. Awesome. Thank you so much. Great to be here, everyone. Uh, so my name is Ben Kaplan. Uh, super excited to take you through our session today. Uh, how to hashtag elevate your game, improve revenue and retention with the right ads approach. So today, I hope to give you a little bit of kind of two major pieces. <clears throat> the first is the why. Why incorporate ads in the first place? Uh, and the second is the how. Once I've sold you, hopefully, or, or you've come to uh, understand the why, what are the best ways to, to implement this appropriately? Just a little bit about myself. Uh, so like I said, my name is Ben Kaplan. Uh, I'm the product marketing lead for Mopub and Twitter. Uh, I've been at Mopub and Twitter for a little bit over two years now. Uh, but I actually spent about about 12 years or so on the publisher side. Uh, and in that role, I was working with a bunch of different publishers, helping them improve their digital ad efforts, how to incorporate advertising to drive incremental revenue for their businesses. So it's been really great to kind of bring that publisher perspective over to Twitter and Mopub as we work with thousands of publishers uh, and developers every single day. So with that said, let's, uh, let's get into it. So again, let's start with the why. Why incorporate ads? I think the knee-jerk reaction probably from a lot of folks is likely that as soon as players see ads, uh, they're less likely to stay in the game, right? Uh, you know, the concept of an impactful ad experience and engaging games, they're mutually exclusive, right? Well, actually, the data would suggest otherwise. The data would suggest that that's wrong. Um, if you look at some great surveys and information that our friends at Facebook and VentureBeat put out last year, they conducted a number of surveys that showcase that ads actually augment overall revenues and improve player retention. Now, I'm sure everyone can expect here that ad game revenues have jumped you know, over years. But I think what's more impressive here, besides for the revenue increase, is that 65% of developers surveyed see in-app ads as actually complementary to in-app purchases. And a majority of them actually see in-app ads driving more in-app purchases. So not only are ads themselves incremental revenue, they're actually driving increased in-app purchase revenue. Now, the majority of developers surveyed also believe that in-app ads can improve player retention and actually gamers play longer because of ads. Now, if that was not enough, uh, three out of every four hardcore players surveyed actually responded they're okay with rewarded ads. And then a vast majority of gamers are actually happy happy with the ad supported model. So some stats, some numbers to chew on there. Hopefully it gives you a sense of the why, why it makes sense to incorporate ads to really augment your game and augment your revenues. So now that we've addressed kind of what that why is, uh, I wanna jump into the how. And the, the critical thing to understand here is really four key themes to consider when implementing an ads approach. And the first is rewarded. Notice how I'm not saying rewarded video, I'm saying rewarded. Uh, and with rewarded, it's less here about the actual yield optimization or the demand sources. Um, it's really about both the placements of those rewarded experience and the types of rewards being offered. Second, demand diversification. This is really about moving beyond what I would call performance demand, or maybe said another way, ads for games and your games, advertising other games. So how do you move beyond that, not only to improve player retention, drive incremental revenue, but also give a higher quality experience. 
Third, unlock smarter user acquisition. How can you leverage per impression revenue information, both from an ads perspective and IP perspective to better segment your user base and then be more profitable with your user acquisition efforts? And then finally, once you've kind of gotten those other three right, it's really about the yield management. How do you maximize revenue, ideally at the per impression level, but doing it in a way that maybe doesn't take away from or uh, too much of an operational cost for you and your business, right? You spent all this time creating a game, you've done all these other things. The last thing you wanna do is have to worry about waterfalls and yield management. So those are the four. Starting with rewarded. Again, I'm saying rewarded here. I'm not just talking about rewarded video. And the reason I say this is because especially as we look for more engaging formats, it really depends on your game experience. It could be rewarded video, rewarded playables, rewarded display. Um, it doesn't necessarily have to solely be the video format. Now, in doing this, we have to consider both the placements and the types of rewards. And when it comes to placements, publishers have to be really, I wanna say diligent, but really specific um, about where they're placing rewarded experiences. Uh, as no single app experience is the same. You know, I hear this from a lot of publishers who are heavy IAP or maybe just starting to consider ads. And they say, well, if I adopt rewarded ads even, I'm gonna be like everyone else. I'm, I'm turning into the rest of the environment. My game is unique. And the way that you place these ads and the types themselves allow you to keep your game experience unique, to keep your ads experience unique. So you don't have to feel like you're being like everybody else. You know, a few key things to keep in mind here, the scarcity of the placements, you wanna limit the frequency of them depending on what kind of retention you're trying to garner. And of course, A-B testing to find the perfect balance. Uh, just some common placement ideas to keep in mind. You know, this could be finishing a round or level, uh, losing a life or a round, uh, the beginning of a match or level in a game, and even some kind of do a daily login bonus. Um, a few more examples that are just top of mind for me, you know, you could take one publisher who may not uh, show ads until a user reaches a fifth level of the game experience. Um, the reason for this is they want to assure they've kind of gotten that, it's called addicted personality. I've gotten involved in the game, I'm invested in the game, um, which would reduce the risk of any possible user deterrence once they see an ad experience. Then you could look at it on the flip side and take another publisher who maybe offers players five rewarded ads in a row to optimize or to maximize on those rewards for those players as they then proceed in the gaming experience. So that's placements. When it comes to the types, as you're probably getting a sense from me, the types of rewards you offer are as important as the placements. Um, for this, uh, we find that the most sophisticated publishers really maximize the value of the reward guaranteed or offered to the user um, with unique rewards, again, back to that unique experience of the game, that are immediately useful for some kind of relevance to the player and their experience and are complementary to the gameplay experience. So not interruptive, but complementary. Again, we're trying to drive ad revenue here, but also do it in a way that we're improving and maintaining player retention. Some common rewards that you would see here are you know, character upgrades, uh, multiple currencies. Uh, you could do additional lives and rounds multiple options. Uh, an example I like of a, of a publisher here is, will they actually give players to be eligible up to three ads per day? So they'll hit them with maybe three ads per day as a frequency, but those players have to watch those three ads to be able to gain access to some, I don't know, exclusive coveted reward. So I really like the mechanics there of it's still a user opt-in, you're only showing that frequency of three, but that reward is so specific and exclusive that users are actually incentivized to watch those ads in order to access that reward. So again, I'm, I'm riffing a little bit here, but uh, as you can see, there's a lot of range, a lot of options. Um, what it really is about, as I mentioned before, it's about finding the implementation, both from a placements and a rewards perspective that is unique to your game and unique to your players. So now that we've implemented our reward experience, let's talk about demand diversification. Uh, and really where we see a lot of publishers go wrong is, hey, I want to maximize as much revenue as possible. But really, they solely have what we would call performance demand. So this is ads for other games running in their game. And the problem with this, and, and I'm not saying there can't exist performance demand, but if you exclusively have performance demand or just ads for other games, is you're taking players out of that experience. 
right? If I see an impactful reward experience that's driving me to play a different game, I'm gonna leave your game and play that game, right? So how do we alleviate that? How do we make sure that we're still maximizing revenue without sending our users someplace else? And the first way to do this is really about making sure you mix both performance demand, so those games or those direct response advertisers with what we would call brand or omni-channel demand. Um, so these are big name brands that are more about awareness campaigns, familiarity campaigns, and really delivering reach creative that keep users in the app experience. So by mixing up these different sources, you're not only gonna get incremental demand because you weren't accessing maybe that brand or that omni-channel demand before, but also that creative is not constructed in a way to take the user outside. It's not constructed in a way for the user to leave and install another app or play another game. Right, you're keeping the user in your app experience, again, we're trying to maximize ad revenue, but also improve and maintain player retention. So having that healthy mix is important. The second piece here is on quality. So the, on quality, I think the first thing to talk about is we talked about those brand advertisers, right? You see the Coca-Cola's of the world here, the L'Oreal's of the world here. You know, in order to get or receive a lot of those, what we would call Fortune 1000 advertisers, you want to make sure that you're running a quality uh, inventory or have a quality experience. Um, and oftentimes you wanna make sure you're working with the right measurement partner or right, right partners and able to deliver that. So for example, the IAB's open measurement SDK is a great signal on viewability that those Fortune 1000 advertisers feel comfortable spending in your app. So as much as you would be receiving brand or omni-channel demand before, incorporating something like the open measurement SDK actually improves the, not only the brand demand you would receive, but the quality of those advertisers. The second piece on quality really pertains to your users. Right? You really wanna make sure that the players in your game are only seeing ads that have been scanned to ensure that they're, let's call it of the right level to appear in your game. Right? You don't want any sketchy experiences or um, uh, experiences that might take away from the quality or the perception of what your game has. Um, so you really wanna make sure that you also have partners involved that can help with that scanning. Uh, further than that, you may wanna have some customization in the types of ads that show. So for example, um, you wanna make sure you have control so competitors don't appear. Uh, and you may want to uh, segment certain ads that could come in at the app level, at the category level, maybe at the URL level, or maybe you even want to go down to a specific ad creative. Again, those kind of controls are going to make sure that as you're opening yourself up to more different demand sources, you're maintaining that quality ecosystem for your users. This is a fun one. Unlocking smarter user acquisition. So with ads and being able to understand the performance of ads, you can better understand the full value of your users. And what I mean by full value, right? When you think about running user acquisition campaigns, um, you see this one on the, on the right, you have the same CPI across campaigns. But as you run these campaigns, these users will translate to being potentially higher ad revenue predisposed or lower. They could be higher IAP disposed or lower. But being able to run ads help you understand, especially being able to measure at the per impression level, you have that per impression management, um, to understand, hey, this user is worth more to me than this user. This user is what we would call potentially an ad whale versus an IP whale versus uh, maybe a user who's not as high on, on either of those uh, levels. Um, but what's critical here is that as you can see, you're making a higher CPM, again, same CPI across the board, uh, but you're making a higher CPM from some of those users. Now that's critical because what that means is you actually can maintain the same level of profitability, but you can go back and increase that CPI in your user acquisition campaigns. Now you could have the same CPI and have a higher margin, but since you're making more on that user, and then you can then leverage that as a signal to reinvest back into your user acquisition campaigns, it allows you to actually be more aggressive and smarter about user acquisition and ensure that you're maybe being more aggressive, having a higher CPI, but still maintaining that strong sense of profitability. So having that kind of per impression understanding of ads and internet purchases help you segment your users and say, hey, look, I wanna serve an ads experience to this user. I wanna serve an IAP experience to this user. Or you could say, look, this user hasn't shown enough retention or isn't addicted enough to the game yet. So I actually wanna serve no monetization experience at all. This kind of per impression information is critical. And seeing it from the ads perspective is really gonna give you a full scope on kind of what users you wanna monetize at what levels. Now, 
talked about a lot of key critical things. Talked about rewarded, talked about demand diversification. We talked about how adding ads and understanding from a per impression level can help with smarter UA. Now, once you've done those three things, the last but also a critical component is the yield optimization. And as I mentioned, when I was breaking down kind of the four key themes, this is one where you want to be able, now that you've done all those other aspects, to maximize your yield, as we could say, as much as possible. But you want to do it in a way that it's not going to be a huge operational lift for you, right? You've got enough stuff going on. You're running your game. You're trying to get your core loops going, uh, trying to increase that user retention. The last thing you want to worry about is uh, managing different lines, different demand sources. What do I need to optimize today? So on and so forth. Um, and a critical way to do this is through what we call the unified auction. So as most of you know, or, or I assume most of you know, um, in the yield optimization or in the programmatic demand space, or just in the demand space in general, there's a lot of different sources. They bid and buy in a lot of different ways. Some are CPM, some are CPA, some are CPI, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, some of them, the way that they buy are different. Some are reserve pricing, some are in real time. You've got all these different demand sources competing in different ways. And what a unified auction does is it brings them all to the same playing field, has them all competing together in the same way on the same rate, which is a CPM, a cost per thousand impressions. And a way to activate the unified auction, one of the great ways to activate that unified auction is through in-app bidding. And so for those who may be unfamiliar, what in-app bidding does, is it takes the historical, what we would call waterfall, where you've got different yield sources and you need to move them in different places and it flattens it. And it has all demand sources competing in real time on a per impression level. So number one, you're gonna maximize revenue, right? Cause you're creating that per impression competition in real time, right? Everyone competing together. But second, what it's also going to do is it's one line, it's flattened. You don't have to worry about the operational headache of, oh, I need to work on this line and then work on that and work on another one. So what you're going to get is the revenue benefits without the operational kind of drag on your business. Now, this is something that exciting that was introduced back in 2017. As we look in 2021, what's most exciting when I look at the industry is there's more partners than ever operating in this structure, operating in this unified auction, operating in app bidding. And why that's super exciting is this makes it easier. So I don't have to work as much in a hybrid approach. So I'm doing some bidding and then some waterfall here. Um, and I think because of that adoption, we've actually seen more publishers both adopt bidding as a, as a mechanism to yield management. But what they've also done is they've also seen so much more gross revenue transacted. We're talking five, six, seven X in both adoption and revenue transacted, even over the past seven, eight months. Again, as more networks come on, as more partners see the value in bidding. The other piece I want to mention here, because right, because the tool set's important. Um, but I don't want to leave out the strategic aspect of it. And when I say the strategic aspect, you really want to make sure you're working with a partner here who's invested in your overall success. And what do I mean by overall success? I mean, you want to make sure you're working with partners who are invested in your overall revenue or your overall average revenue per daily active user or ARP down. And what I mean by that to go even more specific is you want to make sure that you're working with partners who give you frameworks, strategies, approaches, that are about maximizing overall revenue, not just about maximizing their share of your overall revenue. You're really looking for a partner that can be a foundation for your deep rooted growth, right? You wanna make sure that you've got a partner that you can build your business on top of. And those partners should be able to give you strategies and frameworks to best optimize networks, optimize placements, um, partners you should leverage, so on and so forth, um, but doing it in a way that is about increasing your overall ARPAO and your overall revenue. Trying to find that partner might be a little bit more challenging than it seems, but they're there. And these strategies can make sure that you have a partner in crime sort of, that as you're gonna implement an ad strategy, you're doing it in a way that's focused on your overall business success. So that was a lot in about 16, 17 minutes. <laughs> but, um, I do wanna leave you with the four key takeaways, right? I know I cover a lot and there's a lot we can go deeper into all of them, uh, but I wanna make sure you walk away with those four key aspects. And number one, rewarded. Emphasize placements and types of the reward experience, which is gonna augment your in-app purchase and retention efforts. 
And because of that customization, you can keep your games differentiated. You don't have to be like everybody else just because you incorporate ads. Second, demand diversification, right? Moving beyond the games advertising for other games. So this is not only gonna deliver incremental revenue for you, but it's also gonna keep players within your game because of those high impact brand creators. And third, efficiently connect monetization to acquisition. So how do I understand the full scope of my users, right? Which are the ones that are more predisposed to ads and better for monetizing that way? What are better for IAP or what users am I really not sure yet and doesn't, shouldn't really have uh, an ad experience? And then leveraging those signals to reinvest back into more profitable and more aggressive user acquisition. And then fourth, leveraging solutions that streamline your monetization efforts, right? It's enough work to run your game and do these other three things. How can we make sure from a yield optimization perspective, we're maximizing revenue without really sucking up too much operational time? And also ensuring that you work with partners that provide you frameworks that enable your overall revenue or your overall RPL growth, both in the short term and the long term. So that was it. Uh, I know there's some questions that I'll take here, but if we don't get it in the time that we have today, here's just some of my contact information and uh, I look forward to continuing the conversation. Thank you. Thank you, Ben. I'm a little bit late because I was tweeting <laughs> your, your key takeaways. Love to, love to hear that, love to hear that. Because <laughs> they were really good. That was a very solid presentation, particularly the emphasis on um, the reward and how that fits in there. And that's what we have some questions about, even my, I myself, yep. because I think you nailed it. People are very excited. You know, we're seeing so many brands get into advertising and games, really understanding this. I mean, when you're reading articles in ad week, right? Around how to advertise in games, you know it has arrived. And that's one of our questions as well, because I think you piqued their interest. What are some of the top ad networks for brand ads? And again, anonymous attendee, what percentage of revenue top games generate from brand ads? So people are interested in that brand option because that's a great way to sort of like mix it up and, and you know, increase the retention, increase the revenue. Absolutely. Yeah, so. Absolutely. Um, so I, uh, so on the first question, um, I can give you a specific list afterwards, but I, I, I don't want to name drop mm -hmm. anyone in particular, but they are out there. And what I really appreciate about a lot of those networks that perform strong with brand advertising is that for the most part, they are very adept in adopting bidding. Um, I think a lot of it is because those networks often have a place in the, let's call it the web world, whether it be the mobile web or desktop web world. And the concept of what they would call header bidding in that world is so widely adopted there that they are more useful in operating that way, as opposed to a lot more performance networks. I think they're just starting to come into bidding now. And they're mm -hmm. so much more used to that kind of more reserved waterfall network pricing. Um, as it pertains to the percentages, it's really going to depend on your format mix. Uh, what I can tell you is the more that you invest into the video format, that's really what the top brand advertisers and exchanges want right now. Um, you know, when we talk to most of the advertisers, agencies, and omnichannel DSPs out there, demand side platforms, um, their focus is how do I reach the right user at the right time with the most high impact video creative? They literally say video creative. So again, I, I said on the reward experience, it's not just video, but what mm -hmm. we see is if you really want to optimize that brand spend and get that highest percentage, um, the more you embrace that video format, ideally mm -hmm. and rewarded, or if you were to do something like an interstitial, um, that's where you're going to see the higher levels of percentages. Okay. So video definitely, and then mixed up as you pointed out, we have another question here, anonymous. Um, what are common causes of low render rate? That is ad impressions, uh, filled ad requests, how to fix it. So what are the causes yep. and what to do about it? Because again, that's something that a lot of people are going to be grappling with as they go more to video ads. Yeah. Absolutely. So there's three things that really jump out to me to, to improve that. I think number one is, again, the, the adoption of bidding is going to flatten that waterfall. So instead of me having to go from one level to look for a call, then another level, right, that's going to improve my latency, right, or, or reduce my latency, so to speak. So that's going to help in terms of rendering. Um, the second is making sure that when you're calling rewarded experiences, making sure that um, when's the appropriate time to do so. So for example, if you're going to call three experiences, does it make sense to call all three of those experiences on the app initialization? Well, that's really going to depend on your placement. So being really smart and diligent about when you're going to be calling those reward experience that, um, which I'm sure the question is coming from, 
reward is that let's call it a heavier format than a display ad unit. Mm -hmm. um, so being really smart about those ad calls. Uh, the third piece, which you know, I think a lot of publishers don't realize is really examine what is about what is being truly about ad being rendered versus being seen. And, and let me show you what I mean by that is oftentimes a publisher, an ad may load. So there might be a load over a request, but there actually may not be an impression. Now, why is that? Um, that's oftentimes because there might be a way that the publisher has structured their game that maybe the, the ad is being shown, but it's not in view of the user. So what's really important for publishers to look at is I kind of like to call it, this is my opinion, I kind of like to call it true fill rate or true render rate is to understand what are my ad loads over my requests, not what are my impressions over my requests, right? Because the ad being loaded means the ad's there. The impression is that someone may not have seen it. So if you happen to have a really high rate of ad loads over requests, and there's a delta between the, the loads and the impressions, that means there's an opportunity there for you to understand, hey, how am I structuring my game? Where am I calling those ads? And can I really make sure that when that ad is rendered or loaded, mm -hmm. it's in front of the user? So kind of those three elements I'd keep in mind. That's a really helpful shortcut, the last one. I think that's yeah. really, really good. And it's helpful because I see that from our audience, you know, they wanna understand this, they wanna get onto this and and really get the most out of it. So we've got another question like that, and just these basic questions that help a lot. On the developer side, how can hmm. one understand if an ad oppression is brand or performance? Yeah, that's a really, really good question. I thought so. so. I thought you'd think so. Yeah, I was yeah, like, yeah. I really like that question. Yeah. So there's 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 a couple there's a couple ways to look at this. I mean you always want to start with the creative, right? The mm -hmm. creative experience is going to tell you. You can often get an indication too from who the advertiser is, right? You can see that in the URL or if the brand comes through. You know, again, I showed you a slew of advertisers and I don't I feel bad picking one or calling one out, but there's certain advertisers yeah. on that image that I showed you that are probably going to be more brand than they are going to be direct response, right? So uh, I mentioned Coca-Cola and L'Oreal, probably going to be a little bit more brand than let's say some of the games I showcased on that screen, right? You can, I think it's very, um, I don't want to say always assume, but I think you can be really confident assuming that um, ads for different app experiences are probably going to be more performance, going to be more direct response, right? Because they're trying to get that user to install their app or their game experience as you would as a publisher when you're doing your user acquisition efforts. That's what your goal is. So again, you can tell by the creative, but you can also very much get a strong indication from the advertiser. Okay, people are people are coming to you. It's just like just ask, <laughs> really seriously, just ask Ben. Here we go. Yeah, yeah. For indies, um, they've done this in sort of like hieroglyphics. So I'll do my best. For indies, <laughs> I guess it's minimum minimum DAOs for testing ARP yep. DAO, ROAS, or one hundred percent ad monetized games. Yeah. So the way I interpret that a little bit is okay. If you know, if you're a little bit on the smaller side, what's the best way to test this and understand what, mm -hmm. what's working, what's not? Yeah. Um, and again, if we don't have time to get to it today, we, you know, just tweet at me at Ben underscore Kaplan, we can continue the conversation. But, you know, I like to see at least a thousand impressions a day just to start testing on some level. So a little bit less on DAU and a little bit more on just like the activity that you're having in your app experience. And mm -hmm. well, you could say, well, you know, that's basically all my traffic. How do I do that? And then I would go back to kind of that first bullet that I mentioned, that first theme, which is, all right, if I have to hit a thousand impressions a day, if I'm that small, what's the best way for me to implement those reward experiences in terms of placements? And then what's the reward I'm offering to make sure that when my users see it, it's seen as an augmentation to what they're doing, as opposed to something that's taking them away from the experience. Mm -hmm. We still have some more questions. I hope you're going to be around. Um, yes, perhaps. yes. I had Absolutely. one because I've been looking at this. This is interesting. So I've been looking at this over at Forbes. I wrote an article. I should talk to you, Ben. <laughs> <laughs> but there's more coming because the response to that in Forbes, which is not, I also write with Pocket Gamer. I'm proud to do that. But you don't expect that audience to be thinking mm. about rewarded ads, right? So there was a huge um, response to that thinking, yeah, this makes sense. Monetization clicks, ticks all the right boxes. Mm. Um, is there something that you're seeing in the behavior of users now and going forward, because um, you know you pointed out all the data that says that ads complement the experience, which is yep. what we sort of knew, but it's great to see it confirmed. 
But you also sort of wonder how this is going to play out because as we, you know, it's like when you adapt a new behavior, you tend to stick with it. And then that becomes like the new normal or what have you. So are mm -hmm. you seeing signs that that is going, to, that this is the way it is? Or even perhaps as I was looking at in, uh, in Forbes that, um, you know, people are actually expecting this now in a way, not that it's like a, a cheap way to play the game longer, but they just expect this feature because they become accustomed to it. So will this yeah. be a, a sense of expectation, even demand? So I think the answer is, the short answer is yes. What I would mm -hmm. say is, I think in general, most consumers and most players, I would say, are have an expectation that ad experiences are coming. But even with that expectation, I still fear that if you're not smart about where you're placing these experiences, how relevant they are to the customer, even if they're expecting it, it's mm. still not going to perform well and it's going to reduce that retention and reduce that LTV for your users. You know, that's why it's so important that you focus, again, not just on the yield optimization. That's a component, but that's the fourth component, right? You want to start with how do these rewarded experiences really augment and help the entire player journey? Um, look, I mean, when, you, when we look at it at MoPub, the fastest growing format by far, by far, is rewarded video. There's more investment there, both from a publisher side mm -hmm. because their players enjoy it and the advertiser side because of that video component, as I mentioned before. But even with that, I, I really, uh, I would say beseech all the publishers and developers out there. At the end of the day, you wanna create an awesome user experience, an awesome player experience, and ads should be part of that. They shouldn't, mm -hmm. it shouldn't be one or the other, right? I mentioned in the beginning, they shouldn't be mutually exclusive. So even though there's a player tendency to be more comfortable with it, um, you still want to be smart about how you're implementing those reward experiences. Yeah. Well, Ben, this was amazing. I hope that maybe out of MoPub, we might see some uh, best practice around that because I'm seeing some questions around placement, how often it's mm. going to be different, yep. but everybody wants to know those benchmarks. Maybe you'll have something to share. I yeah. Don't know. yeah. More to maybe. come. Okay. Thank you so okay. much. Thank you. Thank you so much. And we'll get on to the next session. So thanks again and have a good rest of the day. Maybe you'll stick around in Discord.